We are not going to be rid of fossil fuels tomorrow. So the fact is we have 1,100 companies in Ontario that are dependent on Alberta's, uh, Alberta's uh, uh, oil industry. So to, to pretend that somehow we don't have a shared interest and we don't have to find a way to move that, uh, that fuel in one way or another would be to hide our head in the, in the sand, if I may say. Whether we want it or not today, oil still has to move in this country. And if it's not going to move by pipeline, it then it's going to move by train or by truck. It's not going to stop tomorrow, unless you can find a miracle that would make it stop. It would not stop. So I'd rather, you know, have a safer alternative, incorporate the cost of plant. This is why cap and trade, by the way, is so useful. Because if you emit carbon, you need to pay for that. When I look at my three grandchildren, I think about what their lives are going to be like and whether they're going to live in a world where they're going to be able to see a future and that's what drives me, that's what motivates me because this is, this is about the future of humanity. It's that urgent. We're not doing enough, it's clear. We're, we're, we're just in a very taking baby steps and many countries aren't even doing that. So yes, we may have passed a tipping point. We can't predict with any degree of certainty uh, where we're now headed based on the carbon that's there, but we know enough that we have to make the turn. We have to get out of the way of the catastrophe that is looming. Uh, and I do, do think, I hope we have uh, plenty of, I hope we have enough time.